Dwayne The Rock Johnson is one of the most well-known and influential people in modern media. He was a successful and influential professional wrestler who went on to become one of the biggest movie stars of the last 20 years. He's also an enormously popular influencer on social media, with nearly 400 million followers on Instagram alone. And if he were to run for president, polls show that nearly half of Americans would consider voting for him. In short, Johnson is a ubiquitous figure in pop culture, who is almost impossible to avoid. But there is a question about The Rock that simply can't be ignored. For years, rumors and speculation have swirled around him, and many people believe that at his age, his physique cannot be achieved or maintained naturally. With his brand increasingly being tied to his physique and his physique continuing to push boundaries year after year, the speculation only grows, and it shows no sign of stopping anytime soon. Before we delve too deeply into the rumors and speculation about Johnson, I think it's worth briefly going over how his physique has changed over the years, because it's rather interesting. If you look back to the time before his professional wrestling career when he was attempting to be a football player, you can see that he was a relatively big guy. It's not entirely surprising when you look at his father and his maternal grandfather, who were both large gentlemen. Johnson clearly has good genetics for size and athleticism. When he took up pro wrestling, he seemed to lose a little bit of the size, though. He also looked softer than he would in later years. Over the next half a decade or so, Johnson slowly and progressively leaned out, to the point that by the early 2000s he had some abs, as well as relatively noticeable definition in his shoulders and chest. 2001 was a particularly important year because this was the year that Dwayne would make his big screen debut as the Scorpion King in The Mummy Returns. It was a pretty minor role, and he's mostly just a giant CGI man scorpion monster, but it was soon followed by a role as the main character in a full-length movie about the Scorpion King. His physique didn't change much for this role, but if anything, I'd argue he put on a little weight and got a little less lean. Where this gets interesting is the next five years or so you can actually see Johnson get progressively smaller, and not just getting leaner or more shredded. He's clearly losing mass. This downsizing is the most notable by around 2006 or 2007, specifically in the movie The Game Plan. Dwayne looks considerably smaller in this role. In particular, his neck and traps seem to be much reduced in comparison to what they looked like before, but especially when compared to the Ninja Turtle-like traps he has these days, which must make it extremely difficult to find shirts that fit. His entire face also seems thinner, to the degree that if you do a side-by-side -side comparison with recent pictures of him, he looks almost unrecognizable. Looking at The Rock from the 2006 to 2007 era, I could be convinced that he's natural. He doesn't look abnormally large here, he kind of just looks like a guy in his 30s with good genetics who lifts regularly. And I have a theory for why. During this period of time, and basically up until 2010, Johnson wasn't taking many action roles. He was only in three action movies, The Rundown, Walking Tall, and Doom. Most of his roles were either dramas or comedies, and I wonder if he downsized to appear less intimidating for said roles. Johnson more or less confirmed this in later years, saying that when he got into Hollywood, he was told that he was too big and that he wouldn't make it if he kept his pro wrestling physique and persona. It's important to note that by this time, Johnson was already in his mid-30s, which is the point at which you've already hit your physical prime and things like testosterone levels begin to decline. But this is where it gets even more interesting, because as the late 2000s came and went, Dwayne started getting bigger again. So that by 2010 and 2011, he was arguably bigger than he had ever been up to that point. To lend further support to my theory about why Johnson downsized in the mid-2000s, his subsequent growth coincided with an increased number of roles in action movies, particularly joining the Fast and Furious franchise. This trend culminated in 2013 with the Michael Bay movie Pain and Gain, where Dwayne played a fictionalized version of famous bodybuilder Leonard Person, aka Big Lenny. Kidding aside, Johnson put on a significant amount of size for this role. Some of this is likely what is referred to as fluff, as he was lacking some definition. But just in terms of sheer size, I think this is the biggest he's ever been. And especially pronounced are his chest, shoulders, traps, and neck. Just compare his neck in these images to the shots from the game plan. It's night and day, and it's important to remember that he did this after 40 years old. More importantly, I think this was the moment when people started to notice Johnson's transformation. I remember back in the day, these pictures went a bit viral, and people were talking about just how big The Rock had become. 
In my opinion, this is also the point where Johnson's physique starts to become the focal point of his career. Following Pain and Gain, he would star in Hercules, where he spent most of the movie either shirtless or wearing something without sleeves. The lion's share, pun intended, of his roles since the mid-2010s have been action movies where he plays muscular guy who does something, muscular guy who chases Vin Diesel, muscular guy who flies a helicopter, muscular guy who trains a giant albino gorilla, muscular guy with a prosthetic leg, etc. This has created a bit of a sticky situation, though. Unlike other actors who beef up for a role, Johnson can't just drop the weight afterwards. Since he is kind of just playing The Rock in most movies, and a major facet of The Rock is being jacked, he basically has to be like this full time. He has to maintain this physique, if not improve it. As he gets older, this becomes increasingly hard to believe, especially because he seems to be pushing his physique even further in recent years. It gets even more outlandish when you hear Johnson say that he's prioritizing longevity. My priority is longevity. I don't think anyone with any understanding of health or medicine would tell you that being nearly 280 pounds ripped would be good for your long-term health. The amount of mass is simply taxing on your entire body. If Johnson was prioritizing his health and longevity, he'd probably downsize back to his more svelte physique of the mid-2000s, rather than trying to get bigger and more ripped. This is where we get into the myth-building of The Rock's persona. And it starts with his diet. Uh, you haven't had candy since 1989. I <laughs> Dwayne is, is so funny. He calls himself Rock Jemima in the kitchen. <laughs> because when you talk about The Rock, his seemingly superhuman diet and workout regime is always at the forefront of the discussion. What The Rock eats, or at least what he says he eats, has stayed pretty consistent for about 10 years now. My diet has honestly pretty much remained the same for the past five to 10 years. When he was promoting Hercules back in 2014, he described what he somewhat jokingly called the 12 labors diet. As he detailed on Twitter, this meal plan consists of seven meals. Meal one, a 10 ounce filet with four egg whites and five ounces of oatmeal or cream of wheat, measured dry. Meal two, eight ounces of chicken, two cups of white rice, one cup of broccoli. Meal three, eight ounces of halibut, two cups of white rice, one cup of asparagus. Meal four, eight ounces of chicken, a 12 ounce baked potato, and a cup of broccoli. Meal number five, eight ounces of halibut, one and a half cups of white rice, and one cup of asparagus. Meal number six, an eight ounce filet, nine ounce baked potato with salad. And meal number seven, 30 grams of casein protein and 10 egg whites scrambled with onions, peppers, and mushrooms. It's hard to tell how serious this diet actually was because he also included one cup of fresh anemian lion blood. Who does this guy think he is? Liver King? Actually, now that I think about it, what is it with guys with the last name Johnson? There's also that translucent billionaire who's trading blood with his children. Maybe that's a subject for another video. Over the last decade, Johnson has wavered very little when describing his eating habits, except for changing his fish up from halibut or cod to salmon for some nebulous health reason. Just recently transitioned my cod uh, meals of the day to salmon, which I f***ing hate by the way. I hate salmon, I've... but it's a great fish in terms of your health and fitness. As well as eating buffalo instead of steak sometimes. Maybe he includes some blueberries or whatever. But the general outline is the same, six to seven meals. I do eat five to six, sometimes seven meals a day. A protein, a carb, and some kind of veggie most of the time. 10 ounces of bison, uh, a cup and a half of white rice again. With some greens, I'll have a uh, salad. Or maybe even a sweet potato sometimes, usually a protein, and that one is usually chicken. Like a rice, as well as chicken breast. I'll have some greens. If you're at all familiar with movie star diets, you'll recognize this as a slightly more diverse version of the chicken, broccoli, and rice diet that so many celebrities claim to use when they need to bulk up. Brown rice, grilled chicken, broccoli. Chicken, fish, steak, steamed vegetable, and occasionally some brown rice. It was about nine months of um, chicken breast and broccoli and training. I would eat at least two rotisserie chickens a day myself. It's similarly hard to believe for a number of reasons. The first is the one that should be the most obvious to anyone. Dwayne Johnson is worth like a billion dollars. 
He has a personal chef and a nutritionist who work with his strength and conditioning coach. There's a handful of chefs who I work with and I have one advisory chef who speaks to them. Johnson can afford to have thousands of pounds of his personal gym equipment shipped to wherever he's filming. He's not a regular person who has to think about what he's going to eat seven times a day. It's delegated to other people. He doesn't need to be eating like a bro science lifter on a budget. He could, and let's be honest, probably is eating a way more diverse and delicious diet than something Jason Genova could make in the microwave. There are zero logical or logistical reasons for him to be eating basically the same three meals every day of his life, except for his supposedly epic cheat days. The second problem is that it just doesn't make sense. And I'm not the first person to point this out either, but in recent years, The Rock has claimed to eat about 6,000 calories a day. It's probably somewhere between five and 7,000 calories a day, that anywhere between six to, well, I would say possible, almost 8,000 calories a day. That doesn't add up, like literally. Just stop and think about it for a second. If he's eating 6,000 calories a day and eating 6 to 7 meals per day, each meal would have to be pushing 1,000 calories. And if you just look at something like his Hercules diet plan, it just doesn't approach those numbers. It's a carb, either rice or a sweet potato, and some chicken. You think that's also going to be over 1,000 calories? A bit of rice and some chicken? Doesn't sound like he's well on his way to six to 8,000 calories now, does it? Just to put things into perspective, 6,000 calories is as much, if not more, food than Mr. Olympia winning mass monsters like Jay Cutler and Ronnie Coleman were eating while bulking. I'd buy a whole cow at a time. At the time, I was eating probably four, meat, four pounds of meat a day, but I'd buy 150 pounds of chicken at a time. I'd buy 30 dozen eggs, so I'd buy a whole case of eggs. I don't look forward to eating anything. If you ask me what my favorite food is, I don't have a favorite food. I don't like to eat anything. There's nothing specific that I like. The Rock isn't bulking, though, which we know because his trainer has said that he can't put on the extra fat due to his demanding acting schedule. So where are all of those extra calories going? And to be fair, he's not the only one to make these claims. Early last year, Hugh Jackman said that he was eating around 5,000 calories per day to bulk up to play Wolverine again in Deadpool 3. I complain about it all day long. I'm in this thing right now where I'm eating 5,000 calories a day. I'm just loading, eating, eating. Then a month later, he tweeted out his meals for the day that allegedly totaled over 8,000 calories, if you want to believe that. I'm not going to break out the compilation, but over the years we've heard so many actors discuss the supposedly enormous amounts of food they need to eat and the drastic lengths they need to go to consume it, such as blending up meat smoothies like they're fucking Marcus Rule or something. So I would just put it into a blender, blend it all up, and just drink chicken. Isn't that gross? It makes you ask the question, why? I think there are a few reasons. The first is the simplest. It gives them something to talk about during interviews, and it's publicity for the movie. Is it, is it when you go on the diet as Superman, what does Superman eat? <laughs> they can say they've been working harder than ever. They've been eating more, and they're going to be even more jacked than they were the last time. The second reason is because they can get away with it. And by them, I mean the movie industry. They know the average person doesn't know what 1,000 calories of food looks like. Never mind 8,000 calories of healthy food. And you can even fudge the numbers with those crazy epic cheat meal days that kind of just look like normal if slightly decadent meals. I mean, we're not talking about Brian Shaw wood chippering over 23,000 calories in a day. It's like two burgers and some fries, or a large portion of sushi. The average person heard one time 10 years ago that Michael Phelps ate 10,000 calories worth of Subway sandwiches every day to win the Olympics. So why wouldn't The Rock be eating 6,000 calories to play a comic book character? Even assuming he really was eating 6,000 calories a day, the question is still, why? What is he doing that requires him to eat that much? This is where we cross over into Johnson's workouts. The problem here is that it's hard to know what he actually does in the gym. There is a lot of footage of The Rock training, but it's difficult to say whether they're really part of his routine or if it's just something flashy or different for Instagram. If you Google The Rock's workout plan, you'll come across countless breakdowns from official and unofficial sources going back over a decade. Similar to his diet, it's hard to know what to make of any of these workout plans because while they may look normal at first glance, they begin to make less sense when you look at the details. 
For reference, I'm going to use the workout plan Johnson used to get into shape for Black Adam. First, because this information came out fairly recently. Additionally, I think this is the craziest his physique has ever looked. He's as close to his peak size as ever, but also considerably more defined. Johnson also claimed that this was the hardest undertaking of his career. Around the time that Black Adam came out, Johnson's coach and business partner, Dave Rienzi, posted the plan that they used to prepare for the movie on Instagram. You can see from these breakdowns that Johnson was doing at least five major movements for each muscle group, with each movement consisting of three to four sets of 10 to 12 reps, with some lifts getting up into the 20 plus rep range. We also know that he's training six days a week, and this is actually up from what he was doing even in his mid 40s. Generally train about five days a week, and then there's two days off, so sometimes there's two days off in a row that I take. So this is a level of volume and frequency that is on par with what a lot of top bodybuilders do. And certainly some of the greats like Dorian Yates have managed to get by with lower rep ranges and less frequency. I don't know exactly what kind of weight Johnson is using for a lot of these movements, but he is a guy who says that 275 pounds for 8 reps on incline bench is not too heavy because he has a reconstructed shoulder. So just to recap a bit, Johnson is training as frequently as some of the greatest bodybuilders of all time did in their prime, while eating as much as they did during a bulk without gaining any extra fat, and he's doing this while totally natural, in his 40s and 50s. This is where we come to that elephant in the room. Even being generous to Dwayne Johnson, it would be highly improbable that he is natural. Yes, he obviously has good genetics. He's also definitely a hard worker who spends a lot of time in the gym. But no matter how good your genetics are and how hard you work, there are limitations to the human body. You simply don't peak in your late 40s and early 50s without some kind of assistance. Especially if you were already in incredible shape to begin with. And by his own admission, he's had numerous injuries over the years. I'm like the bionic man. I've got surgery, 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 surgery. What Dwayne Johnson is trying to get us to believe is that somehow he's defying basically everyone's understanding of biology and sports science and getting bigger and bigger as he gets older and older. Many people have accused The Rock of using steroids, most notably Joe Rogan who has called him out multiple times, yet was strangely reluctant to broach the subject when Johnson appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience. We can only guess as to why Joe was unwilling to confront Johnson face to face, but the issue of PEDs is something Dwayne has generally avoided talking about. One of, if not the only times he has spoken on the issue was during an interview from 2009, in which he admitted that he and his friends experimented with steroids in their late teens when they were football players. In my opinion, the question of whether or not The Rock is using steroids is actually less interesting than the question of could he even admit he was if he wanted to? We know that Hollywood has kept the lid on the PED issue for a long time, and there are obvious reasons why. Most of the roles that these actors are doing insane transformations for are comic book movies, and their audiences are, at least in large part, children. The optics aren't great if the actor playing the hero in your $300 million baby movie admits that they're taking steroids. I think it's inevitable that this wall will start breaking down at some point, though. When so many of the people going through these superhero body transformations are increasingly in their 40s and even 50s, they can't avoid the issue forever. We've seen a small number of actors such as Alan Richson admitting to using TRT to achieve the body he had in Jack Reacher. He's also gotten even bigger for season 2 so you can come to your own conclusions about whether that's all he's taking though. As it becomes more and more normalized to manipulate your hormone levels like this, I think it's just a matter of time before these aging stars begin to come out and admit to using HRT. For The Rock, I think it's a bit more complicated. There was probably a window for him, sometime 8 to 10 years ago, where he could have come out and said that he was starting some form of HRT as he was getting older. And I honestly doubt anyone would have really cared. However, he's waited so long that he's kind of painted himself into a corner here. So much of Johnson's brand has become about hard work. He calls himself the hardest worker in the room. We got a saying, which is you want to be the hardest worker in the room, but you also want to be the smartest worker. A term which has even made it into his Project Rock apparel. As I said earlier, he obviously does work hard. 
You can't look the way he does without working hard and being extremely dedicated. But you also can't look like The Rock for a number of other reasons. He's incredibly wealthy. He has access to resources you couldn't dream of that make things much easier for him. I generally set up a gym, a private gym, rent out the warehouse, rent the equipment, ship the equipment. It's just so by the time I, I get into the location and I'm ready to work, it's, it's a turnkey operation. Personally, I think that's why he tries to put forward such a Spartan image when it comes to things like his diet and workouts. It is to convince people that they can achieve it too if they just work hard enough. You just have to get up at 3.30 a.m., lace up your Project Rock shoes, have a Zo Energy drink, and step into the iron paradise. For The Rock to admit he's been enhanced, or to say he's going to start taking something now, would kind of be a betrayal to the people who have bought into his message. It does make me wonder, though. You can make the argument that Johnson has been a net positive, regardless of whether you believe he's natty or not. His philosophy has inspired potentially millions of people to improve their health and fitness. But it is also a double-edged sword to tell people that they can do anything if they just work hard enough. You can't. It also takes genetics, innate talent, and sometimes just sheer luck. When people run up against the wall of reality, they often end up discouraged or feel like a failure because they didn't quote-unquote work hard enough. I'm not saying The Rock specifically is responsible for everyone's insecurities or frustrations, and he's not as bad as someone like Chris Hemsworth who actually sold a fitness app based on his physique, but it's still part of a systemic issue plaguing the fitness industry, social media, and the entertainment industry, and he does have a part in that. Even if you genuinely believe that Johnson is natural, he's still cultivating an image that doesn't represent reality. One that gets harder and harder to believe with each passing year. If nothing else, it makes you wonder how long he can keep this up. I mean, let's look 10 years into the future. Is he going to be doing this in his 60s? Is he going to be doing it in his 70s? How much will he weigh by then? 400 pounds? How many calories will he be eating? 9,000 or 10,000? Will he claim he's working out 8 days a week like Hulk Hogan saying he wrestled 400 days in a year? And at what point does the general population's appetite for this dwindle? When do they go, okay Dwayne, enough is enough? I don't know. As I said at the beginning, Dwayne Johnson is one of the biggest figures in all of modern pop culture. He's a juggernaut, and it's almost unfathomable to think that he will stop or even slow down anytime soon. Realistically, how could he stop if he even wanted to? What is the off-ramp for this perpetual cycle of constantly trying to one-up himself or find those higher gears? As much as he's setting these unrealistic standards, he's also being held to them, or more accurately, being made to one-up them. So I asked him to remove the muscle padding. Plus also, I was putting in a lot of work. I wanted to transform my body for the role. Mm -hmm. He's now stuck in this feedback loop where his career is based on his physique. And his physique has to keep getting bigger to sustain it. How many franchises is he a part of? How many brands is he associated with or outright owns? It all comes back to his godlike physique and his ability to sustain this, if not increasingly up the ante. And this isn't me trying to say, oh, poor Dwayne Johnson, the billionaire movie star, he can't stop being Jack. But the truth is, as impactful as Johnson is, he's also somewhat a victim of his own success. As I've said in regards to Liver King, it's easy to single out one person and criticize him. And there are certainly valid reasons to criticize The Rock. But the truth is, these industries and communities are much bigger than any one person. It illustrates how even someone as big and famous as Dwayne Johnson is still under pressure to maintain an impossible standard. When you think about it like that, you start to question how anyone can avoid feeling that kind of pressure. I think this is especially true of young people who have rightly come to believe that everyone in the fitness industry is lying about being natural. And honestly, they probably are. It's harder now than ever to know who is natural and who is not. You have to take everything everyone says with a grain of salt and assume they are lying to you for some financial gain. And in that light, you can easily see how somebody could become disillusioned with the idea that anyone they see on social media is natural and then come to the conclusion that they themselves need to start taking steroids if they want to make any progress. To me, that is the biggest issue with the fitness industry and entertainment industry as a whole. It's usually the most insecure and impressionable people who are being deceived. Until there is total transparency from everyone involved, 
This problem will never go away. This video was just something a little bit different. Sometimes I have an idea or thought that tumbles around in my mind for a while and I want to talk about it without making a crazy in-depth video. I would like to make more of these shorter one-off style videos in the future when the mood strikes me or I have an idea that has been lingering in the back of my mind for a while. So look forward to those, I guess. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. And a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thank you. Squirt, Poncho Villa, Jonas Namenson, Rusty Shackelford, Jackson, Fightback CBD, Mike Robals, Bone CK, Scott Richmond, Fisherman666, Random Candor, Fuzi Eunice, Dot Old Neon, Timothy Lee Peterson, Julius Caesar Has Jungle Fever, Ellie, Firebrand, Quasi, Snepsts, Alex, and Neem.